Were you ever inspired to write the greatest guitar solo of all time? But then you looked at the chords of the song and you had no idea how to play over them? Or do you only know two or three arpeggio shapes and playing them up and down is getting really boring? Well, then you're in luck, because I have a truly amazing trick for you today. But first I actually need a guitar, so please let me put the camera down real quick. Alright fellow shredders, the awesome system and trick I want to show you today will make it possible for you to play over any cadence and you will sound like a true arpeggio wizard while doing it. And great news, you don't have to learn hundreds of complicated shapes in order to do this. In the first chapter of this tutorial I will break down this easy concept with no added confusing nonsense. And in the second chapter things are getting really interesting because I will apply this system to an amazing cadence in E harmonic minor. After that it's your turn to practice and master this with the mini course I made for Patreon. But first we have to work on the fundamentals together to turn you into a true arpeggio master. Okay, so let's admit it together. As guitarists, we're always guilty of thinking in boxes or shapes when it comes to arpeggios. And it seems quite simple at first. You encounter a completely new chord that you've never seen before. So naturally, you go to Google and type in the chord name plus the magical word arpeggio. You pick the easiest looking shape and try to memorize it and then you include it in your guitar solo. Pretty easy and effective, right? No! This method really stands in the way of becoming a great sounding guitarist and you will never be able to apply arpeggios interestingly when you're improvising or songwriting. Because, let's be real, you usually don't think about the notes or melodic structure when you do this, you just visualize the root note and the shape and then you play it up and down and then you probably forget it again in a couple of days. Here's a much better way of actually approaching arpeggios. Just like major and minor chords, major and minor arpeggios consist of a root note, major third or minor third and perfect fifth. Sometimes the sevenths are also added to get major seventh and minor seventh arpeggios. And I promise this is all you need to know music theory wise to understand the system I'm about to show you right now. So let's continue right here on the fretboard. Alright, so that's example number one, performed at a slow speed. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. So I'm picking E on the 7th fret on the A string as my root note. And the really awesome trick we're looking at today is building your own arpeggio shapes with only two notes per string. Everybody knows the pentatonic scale or more commonly played with two notes per string. And what we're doing today with arpeggios is actually quite similar to that two note per string approach. So let's say I want to play an E minor 7th arpeggio, a very common one. I need the root E the minor third G, the perfect fifth B and the minor seventh D. But usually we don't really think about those notes and just look up a box or shape and play it up and down as fast as possible. But here's how it looks like in contrast to that when I'm playing those four notes of the E minor seventh arpeggio with a two note per string approach. So I'm playing E, the root on the seventh fret on the A string, G, the minor third on the tenth fret on the A string, B, the perfect fifth, on the 9th fret on the D string and D the minor 7th on the 12th fret on the D string. Pretty easy, right? So this is a super simple E minor 7th arpeggio. All the notes that we need are actually in there, just four notes. And the next exciting trick is that you can just copy and paste this exact shape into the next octave so you get a bigger arpeggio. So I'm playing E G, B and D, then I move this exact pattern to the next octave, so once again E, G, B, D and then I can play E and G on the high E string and then you can just climb back down starting from G and you have a pretty big and cool sounding E minor 7th arpeggio without looking up any scale boxes or shapes on the internet. 
So although we only discussed the basics so far, things are getting much, much more exciting later on, I think you can already see the huge potential of playing and thinking like this. First of all, when you're thinking in octaves, you can easily extend those tonal per string shapes all across the fretboard. Remember, you're just playing the same four notes over and over again. And of course, this is the first and very important step to becoming a better and more educated guitar player, because you're actually thinking about the interval structure of the arpeggios and the notes that you're playing. So far so good, let's move to the second trick now, this is where things get really exciting. So the next pretty mind-blowing thing I want you to understand is that you don't have to change much of this at all to get different arpeggio shapes. You already know this small and really effective shape for the E minor 7th arpeggio, but let's say you want to play an E major 7th arpeggio, what happens now? Well, actually only two notes are changing, you have to swap the minor 3rd for a major 3rd and the minor 7th for a major 7th. So in simple words, you just move up one fret with your pinky finger to get the E major shape. So really slow. So you're just moving it up one fret compared to the minor seventh arpeggio we looked at. So minor seventh, major seventh. So now in just a couple of minutes of watching this video, you know how to play an E minor seventh arpeggio and an E major seventh arpeggio all across the neck without learning any chord shapes or memorizing any diagrams or stuff like that. And this is only the beginning of what we're doing today. But before we continue, this is how you could practice those two awesome shapes. Okay, so how cool is that? I think this sounds pretty awesome, although those are just two simple shapes to start out with. The only thing that's even cooler than that that I can think of right now is that we reached 340,000 subscribers over the weekend. So it's great to have you on board right here if you're actually subscribed. So make sure to do that right now so that you don't miss any more videos in the future. But enough of that, let's move on to the next step. How does this simple system actually hold up when you have to compose an arpeggio section over complicated chords? Well, let's find out. I came up with a pretty cool cadence in E harmonic minor. Check it out. Those are some pretty cool sounding chords, right? But it can look a bit intimidating when you write them down. So to pick the safest and easiest way to play over that, most guitarists would actually just pick the E harmonic minor scale and play it over the entire cadence, not really thinking about the chords. That doesn't sound wrong or terrible at all, but honestly it's a bit lazy and it's a shame that you're not accenting all of those chords melodically because the awesome sound of this cadence gets lost that way. So let's quickly apply our new arpeggio trick chord by chord and see if this system is as effective as I claim it is. So first of all the E minor major 7th chord consists of a root note, minor 3rd, perfect 5th and major 7th. So a minor chord with a major 7th in it, that's why it sounds so cool and exotic. That's a pretty cool sound. So that means I just have to change one note from the minor shape we looked at already. We have to raise the minor 7th D to a major 7th D sharp. So instead of... D is the last note I'm playing and that's actually all I have to do to get an awesome sounding arpeggio for the E minor major 7th chord and when I apply the octave trick we looked at I could play a cool pattern like that for example. Up next we have an A minor 7th chord, so a sound like that. And for that one I can actually just use the minor 7th arpeggio we looked at already. When you start working like this you might end up using the same pattern over and over again. So always starting with the root note, going to the minor 3rd, perfect 5th and minor 7th. But for my guitar solo I want to make it a bit more interesting, so I'm playing it in reverse. So I start with the perfect 5th E, instead of just playing it up, I'm playing it down. So here's the full pattern so far, let's connect those two shapes. And that's pretty cool because you can clearly hear those two chords in there. 
Up next we have a G augmented chord. That one sounds a bit crazy. And as you might know, augmented chords are just major thirds stacked on each other. So to easily come up with a G augmented shape on the fly, I can just play G, the root, then a major third interval, then another 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 one, and so on. And I can continue this all over the fretboard. So if we stick to our two note per string shapes, so one, two, one, two, we get this pretty easy to remember augmented shape. You will absolutely love to hear this in context when we put together the full solo, but we have one more chord, the F sharp minor seven flat five chord. And for this one, I need the root, the minor third, the diminished fifth and the minor seventh. So I'm just lowering the third note of the minor seventh shape you already know. Really simple. So instead of playing a minor seventh arpeggio, I'm playing, I'm just lowering the third note. And I almost forgot the most important one. Of course, we also have a B dominant seventh chord before we resolve back into the tonic. And a dominant seventh chord, as you might know, consists of a root, major third, perfect fifth and minor seventh. So once again, I just have to change one note from the major seventh arpeggio we looked at earlier. I have to change the major seventh to a minor seventh. So I'm just lowering the last note instead of playing for a major seventh arpeggio, I'm playing so I get that kind of sound. So that was quite a lot of music theory, but I promise it pays off. Check out how awesome the full arpeggio sequence sounds over those chords. This sounds so awesome, melodic and complex, but it's actually quite easy to do this, as you know by now. When you do this more often and when you get used to this, you don't have to tediously break down every single chord and arpeggio like we just did. Of course, it will start to come naturally as you're improvising. But this takes a while and you have to practice a lot with the right exercises to get this kind of creative and artistic freedom with arpeggios. That's why I put together a really awesome arpeggio online course for patreon.com slash Bernd. I'm really, really proud of this one. All the exercises, video play alongs, backing tracks, tabs and guitar profiles will greatly help you with mastering this in just a couple of weeks. You will finally learn all the essential major 7th, minor 7th, diminished and augmented shapes all over the neck. So you will finally memorize them once and for all and you don't have to look up any more shapes on the internet. And you will also learn how to apply them creatively with four awesome play along example cadences and arpeggio etudes. So make sure to join the world's biggest guitar community on Patreon today to get access to this course, five out of full online courses and over 180 individual lessons. All right, thanks so much for tuning in today. I had a lot of fun nerding out about arpeggios together with you. As always, I want to share a random German word with you at the end of this video. Flugzeug, that means airplane. Make sure to share today's random German word in the comments below, simply because it's really a lot of fun to confuse all the people who don't watch these videos until the end. Leave a like in case you enjoyed that one. Remember to subscribe to join our guitar community and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.